Welcome to tonight's Landscape Landscape Podcast. Now, the composition is where there's this argument that uh, photography is not art, and some of that argument surrounds composition in terms of, you know, if you've got a painter or a musician, they start off their compositions with a blank piece of paper, and a painter will add. Um, some pencil drawings and then add some colour and some contrast and some shape and some form and create a composition whereas uh, and, a, and a musician will start off with a blank piece of paper and add a, co a chord and then a note and then a beat and then a melody and then some drums so he's, they're creating compositions whereas a photographer we're actually taking things out of the composition it's all there in front of us we've got to actually eliminate things completely different from other compositions in, in art. So we are, everything's in, it's, it's what's in those four lines that we see is the most important thing. In this podcast, we are taking you on a journey with one of the best photographers in the UK, Dean Allen, a Scottish-based photographer who will take us on a visual journey throughout his beloved land. Marvellous. Well, tonight we are joined by Dean Allen, a highly successful photographer and workshop leader based in Scotland, whose images are both striking and, in my opinion, quite unique. Hopefully we're going to explore that a bit later. Before we start, though, full disclosure, I have to say that I have had the privilege of learning from this man myself. Um, and when I heard that he was joining us tonight, well, do you know what? I jumped in and I stole the chance to interview him from everybody. So tough, everybody. I got in first. <laughs> now, after graduation um, in photography, Dean started working in London for an advertising agency and his role um, as a video cameraman. And he was responsible for filming promotional videos for the travel industry. But his love for stills was overriding and his still photography just couldn't be ignored. So he progressed into the commercial uh, photographic market. He enjoyed considerable success in the travel photography sector, working in many high profile assignments. Now, following a break from photography when his children grew up, he's once again picked up his camera, traveled extensively with his wife, and uh, in September 2019, made that life changing decision to remove, sorry, to remove, to move to the Highlands of Scotland. Now, in his own words, he states that the scenery and landscape is among the most beautiful we have ever seen. And it's an absolute pleasure and privilege to now count ourselves as locals in this wonderful area. And as you've heard, Dean, we're all a little bit jealous to be up there. He, he, uh, this move allowed Dean to build up a highly successful workshop business with his tours selling out a year in advance. Now, he's a man in high demand, there is absolutely no doubt, and his guests compliment him on his knowledge of his highlands, his love of and an eye for detail, which we will see during this session, and from my personal experience, his huge patience and sense of humour. It is a great pleasure to welcome you, Dean, tonight, and so we're going to get started. Your face, as I said, that was kind of like, what is she going to say? <laughs> it's all good, it's all true, my man. So, Dean, uh, before, uh, yeah. before we have a look at your work, we have a few questions. Um, I've got some, the others have got some as well. Um, and they're going to okay. interject as appropriate. But talk us through sure. your approach to or philosophy to your landscape photography. Well, well, hello, everyone. And, uh, you know, thanks very much for inviting me along. And I'm delighted to be here. Um, I've had a chance this afternoon to look at several of your previous episodes and uh, been very impressed with what you're creating with this new venture and uh, I wish you all the luck moving forward with this. So yeah, what's my philosophy? Um, well, I've, I suppose I've got a great deal of uh, reverence for the Highlands. I've got a great um, amount of respect for the, for the, for the land and for the, and for the environment. And so 
I would say the respect that I have for the land is probably uh, one of the one of the first approaches that I have for for the Scottish Highlands. I think for me, um, it's a deeply philosophical endeavour for me, um, rooted out of respect for the land, um, in order to convey um, the uh, the essence of, of of the Scottish Highlands. Um, and yeah, you're right. I mean, I've I've been living up here for um, about six years, come up for six years almost now, um, and I find that um, the landscape is um, it's more than just a subject to capture. It's a for me, it's like a living entity with its own spirit and its own history, and therefore I approach each uh, shoot with a sense of humility and a sense of respect, mindful of the Highlands. Um, ancient past and its ancient forces which have shaped um, the rugged beauty uh, that I see around me. Mm. Um, so it, it, it kind of, it shapes every aspect of my photography from the careful selection of the locations, the way I frame each shot and I strive to sort of honour the landscape and capture it in, um, in all its majesty. Um, so and another thing for me is, uh, I, th I think um, storytelling is is, a, is, a, is a, an important pillar of my approach. And I, every photograph that I take in the Highlands is part of a, uh, it's a part of a larger narrative. Um, it's a story that connects the viewers to the landscape in a meaningful way. And what I always try to do is convey uh, an emotion in my photographs. Um, now, now that emotion could be a completely different emotion to what the viewer may feel. But as long as I can get some kind of emotion out of the viewer, then for me, the photograph has worked. I don't feel as if, you know, if I don't want to explain any of my photographs particularly, because I think if I start explaining the photographs, then to me, it hasn't worked. Uh, but I, what I'll try to do is convey an emotion in the photograph, you know, you know, whether it's bleak, whether it's cold, whether it's miserable, whether it's sunny and warm and uh, something um, that, uh, evokes some kind of response out of the viewer. So really my philosophy and my approach to photographing here in, in, in the Scottish Highlands is about capturing not just what the landscape looks like, but what it feels like. Um, so if I can um, respect it and tell a story about it, I feel as if that I am creating images that uh, reflect the true spirit of, of the region. Nice, nice. Now you see, I think I can spot a Dean Allen photograph a mile off. I'd almost, in a way, challenge anybody, stick some shots in front of me, and I'll go, that's that's a Dean Allen, and I can tell you exactly why. Because often photographers will have a, a signature look, and signatures, of, that sounds very derogatory when I say it, but um, and they'll say, oh, that's a Dean Allen, or that's a Louise, welcome, <laughs> if only. Um, but... What in your eyes makes a Dean Allen photograph? Well, it's interesting. I, I, I have I have this discussion quite a lot with my workshop clients during the winter season. Um, and I always re recount the story that I was told when I was at Photographic College back in the, the mid 80s in Blackpool. And uh, a very respected, revered uh, tutor of mine said, Dean, if you're going to make it in this industry, you've got to have a style. And um, I respected him so much that, and I, the lever I believed him, I thought, well, he must be right. So I must have a style. It makes sense. So, you know, in my, through my progression in photography, in fashion and advertising um, and glamour, it's, I, I kind of tried to develop a style. So, as you say, so that people could say, well, that's a Dean Allen fashion shot or that's a Dean Allen product shot. Um, but then I, I kind of, as, as I progressed and down through the years, and particularly as I then um, evolved and went into uh, travel photography. See, travel photography is where I have spent most of my career. Uh, and uh, with travel photography, as I got older, and you go through a lot more uh, personal experiences, whether that be relationship breakups, whether it be um, health issues, whether it be... Um, you know, you, you you know, the bank have declined your overdraft and you've got financial worries. You then 
you, you cannot, for me, I cannot go to a location on one day when I'm euphoric, happy, confident, in love, money in the bank and photograph it one way. And then the following week, you know, I've now, I'm completely broke. Uh, you know, my girlfriend's left me. Um, I've got health issues and photograph that same scene in the same way. I would photograph it in a different way. And so therefore, I when I, years later, I recounted this story that my tutor told me about having a style. And I thought, well, I can't have a style because I'm not a computer, I'm not a robot. Um, I'm a human being with emotions. And therefore my style might be different today as to what it was yesterday because of something that may have happened to me. And so I kind of, but as digital came along and the editing and with Lightroom and Photoshop, I, I sense, I realized actually he, he was right, but he was right for the wrong reasons. You've got to have a style, but it's not necessarily at the camera stage. It's more at the editing stage. And therefore I think he was right. And I think therefore I have, I do have a style. Um, I think it evolves, but I think it, it, it comes into my editing. I, my editing is so simple. It's, it, I think people are amazed. They, they come on my workshops and want to do an editing session and it's all over in five minutes. It's so quick. Uh, but that's just because I just use linear gradients, radial gradients, and that's pretty much it. I don't get involved in Photoshop. Um, but it's that style which has held me, uh, I think, is possibly more at the editing stage than it is at the camera stage. But you're right, I do have a style yeah. in editing. Um, you know, I live here in the Highlands. I absolutely adore it. For me, it's the best place on God's earth and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. My only regret, our only regret, my wife and I's only regret is we didn't do it sooner. Uh, and I should have done because my dad's Scottish and he kept on saying to me, you've got to get up there, you've got to get up there. And, um, but it, it wasn't until recently that I did. Um, but yeah, I, I, it is beautiful, but it's bleak. It is really bleak here in the highlands it's bleak but for me bleak is beautiful you know i'm in the process of writing a book at the moment a photography book which is going to probably either going to be called paradise doesn't have to be tropical or bleak is beautiful i don't know which one it's going to be um but i went through a phase where i i took uh the blues out of the whites and it made a hell of a difference to the style of my photography when I was photographing some of these bleak bothies, these bleak coastlines, taking the blue out of the whites really accentuated the bleakness. And I think, that, yeah, I think that's possibly where my style came from. But also, when I was um, when I was younger and learning about photography, um, I was a uh, I was a great fan of uh, Van Gogh, and I wanted to know whether the paintings of Vincent Van Gogh whether there was anything in he did that I could translate into my photography. And he, um, amongst many things that I learned from, from Van Gogh, one of the things was that he believed when somebody looked at one of his paintings, they looked at it from left to right. Um, so therefore, this, the eye scanned in milliseconds from left to right for his canvas. So I thought, well, that's, that's interesting. And it might be something I use in my photographs. More specifically, Van Gogh actually said the, the, the West, he's talking about the Western eye, not the Arabic eye. It's probably because we read and write left to right. But I thought, well, yeah. he, he thought that the, the human eye looked at his paintings from the bottom left to the top right. So therefore, I didn't have the opportunity to do that um, in fashion, in advertising, or in my travel photography, because my travel photography was very commercial in terms that it was for tour operators. I was photographing for holiday brochures for 14 years, and you don't get an awful lot of um, uh, creative license when you're photographing hotels and bars and harbors. But now that in landscape, I do have that license to create this left to right feel. So I think, and I always photograph from left to right. So I, you know, and it's, you know, so, you know, if there's, there's, a, there's a lighthouse that I, I visit on one of my workshops and this, this lighthouse is completely surrounded by the ocean, 360 degrees, nothing just but the lighthouse. And when we drive into this location, I say to the guys, I say, listen, you know, I'll recount this Vincent van Gogh story. And some people will scoff at it and that's fair enough. It's not for everybody I know. 
um, you know, some people, you know, I know photographers that just say, as long as there's a foreground, midground, background, that's all you need. Um, but, you know, I, I, and as with driving, I'll say, to, you know, this is the story of Vincent van Gogh. So I'll be interested on how you, where you put this lighthouse in the image. And I talk, talk to them about left to right, left to right, because it creates visual harmony, left to right. It does. And and I, I, I and I let them get on with it. And most of the time, they don't compose that lighthouse in the way that I would compose the lighthouse. They would put it on the left-hand side of the image. And I would say, right, it's interesting that you've done that. There's, it's, not, it's not wrong. There's nothing right or wrong about any of it. But why have you put it on the left? And they say, well, you were saying that it has to go left to right. I've put it on the left-hand side and I've opened up the ocean on the right-hand side. And I say, right, okay, that's not what I meant. What I was hoping, what I was hoping was you leave a load of space on the left-hand side and put the lighthouse on the right-hand side. The eye just takes a journey through to the right-hand side. So it's interesting. It's not, it's, it's, it's not fact, but it's just, it's just how I do it. So my style, I think, comes from editing and from composition. Okay, so, um, yeah, I mean, going obviously the Highlands and you obviously a really part of the UK that's um, it's kind of picturesque, let's face it. Uh, you've got landscapes, you've got, you know, beautiful seascapes, etc. What actually makes a photograph for Dean Allen? What was it you're trying to reveal? I mean, in a way that, Let's see, what makes a photograph for you? What makes the finished photograph? For me, I think simplicity. I think nice. um, an emotion. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some, some of my favourite photographers are, are not landscape photographers. They are photographers um, such as um, Henry Cartier-Bresson. You know, the, the body of work that he did when he went to the Soviet Union after Stalin died, he, he could freely photograph in the Soviet Union after after the death of Stalin. The work that he did, the work that Dorothea Langer did uh, when she photographed the great... <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. I've, got a book, I've got a book on him, as he said, yeah, as well, I mean, on the street and etc. So yeah, I mean, the migrant, the migrant mother is a fabulous photograph. Um, yeah. Another yeah. photographer such as, say, Don McCullen, for, you know, the war photographer of Don yeah. McCullen. Yeah, yeah. They, they are not, obviously they're not landscape photographers, although Don McCullen is now a landscape photographer, but they're not landscape photographers. But what I like about those guys is that they created a feeling in me. They created, they, they, they created a, an emotion in me. And I probably get my, my inspiration for, more so from music and the way that music can affect us so very quickly. There's, there's pieces... There's pieces of music that can make me cry just like that uh, because it will remind me of somebody or remind me of a, of a situation and it could move me like this. And if I could, if, if, if I look at a photograph and it makes me feel something, an emotion, the way that Bresson did or Dorothea Langer or, or Don McCullen or a piece of music does, then for me, that's success. But then there has to obviously be uh, vis visual harmony um, you know, it's, uh, you know, Bresson, a lot of Bresson's work was around focus, so they weren't technically fantastic. Um, but I think I'm not, I'm not massively into this, you know, front to back sharpness and it all has to be technically correct on the rule of thirds leading lines. I think more to me, it has to be a, 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 an emotion that I feel. Um, so kind of for me, the emotional response to the, the images you, yeah. For me, yeah. That's really interesting. Me. I like that. I do like that in that case that music can, can uh, you know, when I, when I was taking pictures uh, with doing street photography, it was actually, what got me through doing street is actually listening to my Walkman. Oh, I say Walkman. <laughs> that sounds like an 80s. <laughs> Listen to my, my iPad and just yeah. kind of <laughs> Walkman and just taking pictures. And it was like, in my head, it was like something like uh, Pink Floyd or whatever. And it's like, yeah, it was escapism and the freedom for shooting what you want to shoot, but you felt relaxed because the music was giving you that kind of freedom to do it. So that, if that makes sense. So yeah, I do yeah. get that completely. Um, yeah. And then landscape more so because you're in open spaces. Uh, your emotion, you know, you, you you absorb everything that's around you. And of course with music, that even just a catalyst is to produce some stunning work in it. Yeah. 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 
No, re no, I, I was really just following on from what Paul says. You know, I mean, I, Paul, I mean, I know you, 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 you've got a great love of, of woodland photography. Um, and yeah, I, yeah. I, more, I admire uh, people who do woodland photography because I'm just absolutely hopeless at it. And, um, and, but I've got a great, <laughs> great, great admiration for, for you guys who can make order out of this chaos. Um, you know, he's, I, he's very good at that. <laughs> Yeah, he's, but, a man, um, he's, he's quite he's quite humble, like man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, so that's probably what um, that's the sort of photographs that draw me is ones that can create some kind of kind of feeling in me, I guess. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, before we go and have a look at some of your photos, Steve, you got anything you'd like? Because Steve and I were kind of slightly raving about you beforehand, in particular. Have you got anything you want to ask him before we delve into these shots? Um, I, I must say, I, I'm not actually planned for this because I'm, I'm a support act. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I've, I've actually <laughs> admired your work, work for, a, like I say, for a long, long while. And I think I agree with Louise. I know you was on about you've not sort of stuck to your own style, but you can tell when it's your image and and it's and it's strange because it does right. create an emotion it, every image that you look at of yours does yes. bring an emotion out of you uh, and especially and mm. you you know you know it's scotland you you know where you're photographing but it, it brings that yeah. emotion out of the mood of scotland and and how you've captured it how you've composed it um and it and is as definitely yeah. as definitely something there that's got your name on it, definitely. Mm. And I think mm. as as photographers who don't have the opportunity to photograph them scenes as much as what you guys do, um, when we go to them places, all we're doing is really trying to emulate what you do um, yeah. without a shadow yeah. of a doubt because it, the work is, is, is just quality. But I, I like how you think on the... Also, like that, um, how if a photo looks nice and works, it doesn't matter about rules. Rule, rules are there to help people along. It's it's got everything's got to work together, and when that works together, it, it it's an instant feeling. And and again, that's and it's an, and if it brings out emotion, then that that image works, and and that's how you can tell sort of without telling us that that's what you're trying to achieve you know in, in a millisecond like you say you can see that emotion just come out of the image that's all I want to tell you. yeah i think you know my the, the person who's whose opinion matters the most to me is 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 my wife's because she knows absolutely nothing about photography yes. she knows nothing about the rule of mm -hmm. thirds nothing about leading lines i can yeah. show her a photograph which I have an opinion on, and she might just say it's all right, or she may she may say, "Oh, that's really I like that," and they're they're the people because you know because I do this for a living. There has there doesn't always there isn't always a commercial value to everything I do, but there normally is a commercial value to what I do, and therefore um, I will take photographs with that in mind that. There is a commercial value to it, in terms of, uh, you know, the, you know. I ask this question quite a lot in my workshops. You know, what you know, what's most important is is the final product the most important, or is the experience of capturing the final product more important? Well, of course, they're both important. The final product is important, particularly for me, because it's what I'm judged on. It's what people see, and if I want. To people to come on my workshops they have to be seeing something that they perhaps aspire to or perhaps would like to emulate so there has to be a commercial value to what i do but that's not to say that other aspects you know i do i'm doing a project at the moment which is called highlands at work and these are photographing these photographs probably will never see the light of day but it's photographing the mobile bank that comes through the village and photographing him and photographing the butcher, photographing the shepherd, photographing the train driver. They have absolutely no commercial value to me, to anybody. They're just my own personal thing. So, yeah, it's 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 interesting one. Yeah. Do you um, 
do you do you try and get into the the mindset of the the buyer of your photography when you're taking them images or do you just try and think yeah this is going to work in a commercial way yeah i i tend i yeah I, I tend to have that at the back of my mind um because you know if i say you know i i, I first um uh, i first started running uh, workshops to the Uist islands for example three years ago um and i and i went there the year prior to do a whole bunch of photos and all those photos were based on um attracting people to come on my workshop so they all had a commercial value to them um but at the same time you know i was doing photographs that were only appealing to me you know if you just photograph sheep and photograph the farmer i mean they were just for me but there has to be a commercial value in terms of um, attracting people onto your workshop because you know making a living from landscape photography mm -hmm. there aren't that many people who do it um you know i'm very fortunate that i'm in a position that at the moment i can uh, but that's not to say that may change you know um things do change so i don't take it for granted at all so yeah i do so uh, most of the time i'm taking photographs with that in mind yeah with that in mind as he just said right. let's put his first one up now i have to tell you full confession this I'm dean allen mind. as you know because i tell you every time i speak to you or see you every now yes, and then I... is go this is my favourite shot in the whole world. It is just for me. Okay. It it it, it epitomises okay. everything that Dean's been talking about. It's got the mood. It's got the movement. It's got the emotion. And the okay. thing that okay. really grabs me, obviously, the, the 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 weather in the background, are those three little oyster catches, that are just perfect and set off that mm. foreground beautifully. Talk to us about this image, your thoughts, etc., as you were taking it, and anything behind it. Well, interestingly, I I, I took this photograph uh, I don't know four or five years ago, and I'd gone to this is uh, at Bolnakil Beach, right on the northern tip of uh, the Highlands, uh, and I'd gone there because the Met Office had promised me an unbelievable sunset, and. Bolnakil Beach, uh, it, it's it's split up into two arc. You've got one arc, which is this one here, and then you've got a piece of land which I'm standing on. And then behind where I took this photograph, there's a hill which you, if you climb to the top, you then see another beautiful beach reaching out into the ocean. And it was there I'd actually gone to photograph the second beach for the sunset. Now, when I got there, um, the, the weather was absolutely not, nothing like what I'd been told it was going to be so i walked to the edge of uh this beach um and went up onto the onto the land and i kind of looked out to the sea and i just thought crikey where's this bloody sunset it's nowhere and so um but as i did that i actually turned turned to uh, behind me and i could see this raging storm coming in and the the, the rain shower that was coming down was just absolutely off the scale and so i quickly uh i quickly stopped preparing for the sunset and and ran down to this location and just literally photographed this within five ten minutes uh because what you see there you know just slightly to the right of this photograph was uh was blue sky so i really didn't have much time to, to capture this and that's this is the thing about the highlands is that you know uh, the transitional moments between sunshine and, and storms is 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 so quick, um, and it's those transitional moments that I'm always looking for. Um, yeah, but so quick, isn't it? it's unbelievable. And it was a you know the wind got up uh, and this rain shower just came in, um, and it just um, yeah. Again, this is an example where I kind of uh, I took the blues out of the sky because there was a little bit of blue in the white. I kind of took that out through editing, uh, just to make it just a little bit bleaker. Um, but yeah, and I was lucky. There's a few oyster catchers there, um, but it's nice. It's a beautiful beach, Boulder Kill. In fact, that house there is available to rent, and I did look at renting it for my workshops, and I still might rent it for my workshops um, up in Ascent. Um, but it's it's a beach that's quite often forgotten about because just a mile along the road there, you've got the famous beach of Durness 
um, of Sango Sands, mm. and that's that beach, and rightly so, it's got sea stacks on the beach, and it's a wonderful location, and, and it's well, hundreds of thousands of photographs are taken of it, but not many people come down to Bolnakil Beach, um, and it's just, it's just an amazingly bleak scene. Uh, it's always bleak. It's always bleak on a blue, in a blue sunny day. It's always bleak, but it's it's beautiful and um, yeah, far, far, far shutter speed to to capture the to the sky uh, and capture the energy of the sea. Um, but yeah, really really nice uh, beach. You know, in fact, you know my car is actually parked right at the end there. I can see my orange car in the in the distance there, but. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> now i when i i had to leave being a head teacher uh health reasons yada um i decided to go traveling to the north of the, of the country and i have to say i stood in that exact place because of this photo right and it was yeah. a blindingly blue sky day and i yeah. stood there and i was so disappointed because it just thought it's it's it's, it's stunning but I had this yeah. in my mind and thought I really want to capture it. And it's just, it's, yeah. this is why this is so special to me. It is a moment in time that is just, yeah. everything came together. Yeah. But I love the fact that you, yeah. you, you went there to go yeah. and do something else. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I mean, I've been back to Bolnakil multiple times, dozens of times since, and I've never, never been fortunate enough to capture something like this where you've got a rain, a, a raging rainstorm mm -hmm. going across the sky you've got snow on the peaks in the distance um yeah i i've never been there and it's it's so disappointing because i i talk it up in my workshops and you know on the drive there i talk it up this is going to be brilliant you're going to love this nobody else has got this photograph you'll be amazed and we get there and uh it's just it's just not like this at all and uh, we end up having to do long exposure shots and uh and stuff but it is a great shot again though it's it's i'm I, I have no, no problem with including. Cracker. Yeah, I have no problem in including a lot of man-made objects in my photographs. Um, I, you know, I know a lot of my. Uh, there's a few of my professional friends who, they're, they're much more on along the purest line of uh, the relationship between the sky, the land, and the water, um, and that's absolutely fine. But I, 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 I'm actually not very good at photographing the land the sky the land and the ocean um I, I find it very difficult it's like it's like when you go to luskentire you know luskentire is a great it's a great place to photograph but i've never and i've been to luskentire 500 times i've never gone back to my car thinking i've nailed it i've, I've got the shot this is it i find it so difficult to process and and a lot of my workshop clients find it difficult to process sky land water um mm. and Therefore, when you've got something like a a house here, it helps you refine the uh, composition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Also, that yeah, church, yeah. The, the the dilapidated church in the background, it's yes. yeah, it's kind of draws the eye in towards the background. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 I, I love the tones. Um, the tones are amazing in this image. That's the, one of the things that uh, draws me right into this. It's so easy to, to navigate your eyes through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll just say in, um, when you capture a shot like this, does it, for you personally, does it close mm -hmm. a chapter on that location yeah. because it's such an high quality shot and it's, it's hard to actually improve it? Um, well, there's, there's, I've got uh, two answers to that, Steve. Um, I, I I understand that once you've you've created a, a, a photograph such as this, that it's very difficult to uh, improve upon it. Um, mm. But you can the weather conditions you can always always capture something different. Yeah. Um, but the, the second answer really is um, I go back to these locations time and time again with workshop clients, mm. and I always. I always um, go to these locations and remember how I felt when I first saw this location for the very first time. Yeah. Um, and it would be very easy for me to turn up at a location such as this with my workshop guests and think, well, you know, you, you, and, and feel totally disinterested because they're not going to get a particularly great shot because of the weather conditions. Yeah. Uh, but I always try to remember 
what it was like when I first saw this location. So it, it doesn't close the chapter on, on the location for me from that respect. Um, but it is, it is difficult to, once you've got a shot, which you're really, really happy with, it is difficult sometimes on a personal level to get inspired to go back and take another shot of the same location. I think the challenge as well is is yeah that makes I, sense. I think I think you can sort of the challenge is is to get a still get improve on that image even though it's sort of or yeah. get another image that you're so happy with as well from that location. And like you say, it's that that mm -hmm. feeling that when you first turned up at, at that place, you'll never forget that. You'll never forget that, and yeah. you just want to. You, yeah, you just totally hoping agree. that a client can capture even part of that feeling. That, I suppose that's what you're trying to, yeah. I'm going to move on, forgive me, to yep. the Bow Fiddle Rock. Um, and I know Alistair had a, 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 a question he wanted to ask, but he's unfortunately not here tonight. Um, and this is an image that I have, uh, an area, sorry, that I've tried to capture. And there are many shots of this from more of a central perspective. And this strikes you because of its uniqueness. And because of the colour in the foreground in particular, and obviously, the, I'm going to say ultra long exposure um, that, that's gone here. Dean, how approximately how long do you think this exposure was? Uh, I would say, uh, I would say 45 seconds, somewhere in that region. It's probably a, okay. a 10 stop. Mm. And you've got the lovely drag on the clouds with the, the yeah, punch yeah. in the yeah. foreground. Talk, talk us through this and, and, and actually how you, because I think this is quite a unique shot for this location. Yeah, yeah. I, talk us through your, it's funny. What, how you approach this. Yeah, it's funny. When I when I moved down to, to the Cairngorms, because I used to live much further north in, in the Highlands, and when, when we moved south to the Cairngorms, I vowed that, because um, I was closer to Bow Fiddle, I vowed that I'd never go to Bow Fiddle because it's been photographed so many times. Mm. Um. But I happened to be passing through Port Nocky one afternoon and I uh, thought, well, why not? <laughs> so I, I dropped in yeah. um, and it was a pretty dreary day. It was a pretty grey day. Uh, not a lot going going for me. Um, probably the only thing that was going for me was that I had it all to myself. Um, but I, on this particular shot, I decided to go. Uh, I was using a Nikon D850 at the time and I, mm -hmm. I put 14 to 24 mil lens on. Um, I took the tripod literally onto the floor and got down very low, as low as I could do, um, to get much more drama into the into the shot. Um, and that's, that's yeah, I you know, put it onto, I had to focus stack. Uh, so it's a series of images um, and probably shot it at 14 mil um, at around about 40, 45 seconds. Um, using f11 um, but it was all about creating um, a natural frame that the rocks created mm -hmm. for bow fiddle um, but yeah it's 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 quite challenging when you go back to these types of locations that have been so well photographed um, yeah and uh, it's, it's it's a challenge to try and get something a little bit different so therefore you've perhaps got to go a little bit more yeah. You know, you've got to do something f extreme to because to, you're trying to grab somebody's attention um, and you're trying to um, stop people from swiping left, you know, and ag again, you, you know, you're, you're trying to. Yes. So, yeah, it's 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 a really nice image. Obviously, uh, you know, I've bought out the colors in, in the stones. They weren't like that on the raw file. Um, they've been bought out a little bit. But. Uh, yeah, it was. It's, it's nice, and it's it's a very it's a very very tiny part of the beach. This was, um, but I was yeah. I, yeah, I was I was pleased with it. I've been there before as well, and it's that was four years ago, two thousand nineteen or something along, along the lines of that. And uh, we were there, but it was like the tide was uh, out at the time, uh, and we didn't really get uh, <laughs> that. Is completely opposite for what I got anyway. It's stunning the results there. Mm. Beautiful colours and everything mm. as well. You said it was stones there. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Yeah, I'm... yeah. Hey, Darren. <laughs> Good to see you, lovely. Hello, Darren. So we can't see you right now, but I can see thanks him. for coming on. Fine, I can see him. That's 
Yeah, sorry, I've been, been editing wedding photos, so yeah, I'm here now anyway. I'm just going to introduce Dan, I'll sort of let Louise introduce Dan. No, uh, to cool, you. crack on, you've, you've got it covered, go for it, lovey. Yeah, that's, uh, sorry, uh, Dan, uh, better known as Ginger Captures, uh, Dean, uh, he's got a channel just like Steve and the rest of us, and uh, yeah, he's a uh, love of uh, lamb steak, uh, lamb steak? <laughs> lamb steak as well, probably, but landscape <laughs> photography is for the roof. <laughs> So anyway, he's uh, another uh, uh, lover of Scottish uh, photography, oh, yes. I presume. And I'm yeah, sure no, I've, 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 seen a lot of right I've seen a lot of Darren's work, and uh, yeah, I, I, I sort of tune that into makes... his uh, YouTube's very often. So yeah, thank you very much. Very, very entertaining. <laughs> yes, and good, good quality. <laughs> thank, yeah, thank you. Mm. Photo peeps. <laughs> nice. We made his yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I like it when you say I've just bobbed this one up. I yeah. like that. <laughs> Bit of a Yorkshire scene. <laughs> it's, the Yorkshire it's like how he says peeps all the time. All right, peeps. Yeah. yeah. Lovely how do you do there? <laughs> how do you do there, peeps? <laughs> So before we go on to the next one, I've got a, a uh -huh. bit of an unusual one here. So what is the most insightful advice that someone gave you in your journey to becoming a photographer that resonates with you today, Dean? Mm, well, yeah, I think it's probably going back to something that I said earlier on um, mm. about seeing the composition the way that I see the composition. Um, mm -hmm. In so much as that, uh, you know, I, I, having studied Vincent van Gogh, you know, back in the mid eighties, um, and and realizing um, that his left to right approach was the way that I wanted to go forward, um, I think that piece of advice is thirty five years old, and it's as valid today as it was when I first mm -hmm. heard it, and I still believe that my eye sees things left to right. A lot of my photographs are photographed left to right. And I think mm. that advice is still true today as it was when, when I heard it. And so I would say that's probably the most incisive advice I've received because it's lasted the longest. And, mm. uh, and I, mm. I believe in it. I believe that it's true. Um, and not, not everybody will, will understand it. Not everybody will agree with it, which is absolutely fine. It's, you know, it's, it's it's not it's not the law it's it's not a fact um but i think that's probably yeah. the most insightful advice that i've uh had i would say in the, all the years that i've been a professional and i think that's something you passed on to me in the car as well as get rid of the blues quite a lot <laughs> as i was oh, yeah. uh, being driven around the country by you yeah i, I don't like and, and it is resonates with me as well because you've uh because it was it was so forceful i thought gosh and i yeah i took it in so that would be my answer i well, if i was once in a car with dean allen <laughs> that'd be my answer. marvelous okay paul can we have the next one on please if that's okay Can indeed. um oh wow now this is deceptive and that's all i'm saying over to mr allen yeah, well, th this photograph is um, was taken in uh, on the Isle of Harris in in the Western Isles, um, and I was on the beach photographing so something else at the time, and um, the tide was was going out, and um, there was foot there was footprints all over the beach, and kind of everything was. I was just wrapping up really. I was ready to go back to the car, uh, but I noticed. Uh, out the corner of my eye that as the tide was going out it was actually um, every now and again a, a wave would come in over these rocks and some water would flow down a, a, a crevice this crevice into this rock pool here mm -hmm. so um, I went I, I then walked towards it to see if it would happen again and it happened again um, and but it didn't happen the third time so I, I figured that what must what must happen is that each time the tide comes in or each time the tide goes out, a wave will come up. A, there's a 45 degree slope of rock behind this the, the rocks that you can see, and the water comes up mm. sufficiently enough to come down through that crevice and then empty into this rock pool below. 
And so it's only temporary and it only happens for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. And then, then it's too late. Then there's too much water coming in over through the crevice and the rock pool is covered in, wa in white water. And then, then the tide comes in and you've got to get out of there. Um, and likewise, when the tide goes out, you get about a 10 minute window of this temporary cascade uh, mm -hmm. to capture this photograph. And so really, um, it's, it's a very, it's, a, it's like a moment in time um, of capturing this photograph. It's, it's an amazing experience. I haven't seen anybody else do it, um, and, but I always try to make sure that each time I take my workshop clients there, this is one of the things that I, that is a, it's a must photograph because it invariably ends up being their yeah. favorite photograph of the week. How wide are you shooting there? I, was, I shot this on my GFX um, hundreds, and it was probably a hundred to two hundred mil lens. So I was probably shooting somewhere between one hundred and one hundred and twenty mil on this one, and I would be shooting at around about uh, half a second um, at f. Now, it's actually, this is a, it's just one shot actually. So I would have been shooting at f sixteen. F sixteen is the is the sweet spot on the GFX sensor. So I was probably shooting at f16, uh, around about half a second, mm. uh, and it's all one shot. Um, and it's been it's been edited. There is a little bit of colour in the in the ocean, uh, but it's obviously it's been desaturated throughout the rest of the image. And I would have put a radial filter on the ocean just to bring back out the, the greeny aqua colour. Um, yeah, but it's um, yeah, I, you know, it's I, I, I've. It's it's an e once you get there it's an easy shot but you've got to be prepared. This is the thing about I'm, and I'm, poor, I'm sure you guys who've been to Scotland know it's, it's the workflow up here. You've got to you, your workflow has got to be so much quicker than it is in other parts of the UK. You don't get as much time up here. Things happen a lot quicker with, because of the weather, because of the wind, and because yeah. of the rain, and because of the conditions. So you have to work a lot quicker. So you've only got about ten minutes to capture this photograph. Um, and so, you know, invariably, you know, I've got workshop clients with me next to me and they're, you know, they're faffing around, still trying to put their tripod up and still trying to wipe the lens clean and whatever. You don't, sometimes you don't, you don't have the time uh, to do that. And so it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty quick shot. So um, in, if, if I've captured the whole photograph as I want it to, i.e. I've got the movement in the water um, and I've got the ocean in the midground, uh, how I want it, then I'll, I'm happy with just to take one shot. Um, but if I've got the shot of the, of the cascade, how I want it, or as my workshop client has got it, but the water in the midground is, is, is boring and bland and there's just a big vacuum of, water, of, of aqua water or, or blue water, then we'll take another shot, mm. and we'll, but we'll take a shot just for the, for the ocean. Um, so we'll keep everything mm -hmm. as it is, but just focus on focus on the ocean. And then that night in the hotel, we'll we'll blend the two images together. Um, you know, and yeah, it's it's something nice. which I do quite a lot, particularly with water, um, where I'll blend images together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a nice photograph, um, but you don't get long to do it; just a couple of minutes. Yeah, and the, the edit just makes it even better. I think it's, it's just really striking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly contrasty. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, it really is. Mm. Lovely. Let's pop on to the next one. Yeah, this is uh, Kissable Castle in uh, Castle Bay, Barra. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah no, this beautiful. is beautiful. It works so well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, funny enough, we were talking about uh, the, the photograph at Bolnikil uh, earlier on, and, and, and like, like this photograph, mm. literally half an hour before this photograph was taken we were photographing blue skies and sunny weather conditions and literally within half an hour we were photographing this um and it's yeah it's taken from an elevated scene in a church car park um so um okay. <laughs> and it's looking down um over towards the the, the distant hills are, are vatase which again is a an amazingly beautiful island um and so I think for me on, on this photograph, obviously I wanted to create a sense of space um, and a sense of lo location within, yes. within the castle. I mean, the castle's uninhabited. 
um, it hasn't been it hasn't been lived in for for many many years now. Um, I don't think you can even rent it out um, somewhere to stay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for me, also, what was key here is um, when you get to the church car park, you can you take the photograph as you see it now, or just similar to what you see now. Oh yeah. But, okay. if, but if you but if you uh-huh. go higher up and you you walk up some a flight of stairs next to the castle or next to the church or you go up onto an elevated plateau behind the church i encourage i encourage everybody to do that because then you are getting separation between the 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 castle and the lands behind yeah. um which is something yeah. that i'm quite uh, keen on always trying to educate the people that are with me is try to create this separation between in this instance the castle mm. and to say you know, because you know we're always we we see we see things in three D with our eyes when when we're there, but of course when we get it onto a raw file on the yes. computer, we've seen it in two D. So one way of obviously yeah. trying to recreate this three D is, is to create that separation. So always yeah. um, so getting higher up and elevating yourself up. Yeah, and try to create that separation. If I went higher and I went, um, behind, uh, there's some there's some lands behind where I've photographed this. There would be even more separation between the castle and Vatase, which is preferable. Yeah. I have to say, yeah. it's preferable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, again, That's the only yeah. thing I, I did in this photograph was uh, that they, there's some life boys, because this is actually the the uh, the, the Kalmak route into ba- into Barra from um, Oban. So uh, quite often you'll see great big, huge Kalmak ferries coming through. Um, and there's, there's guide, there's guided lanes for them to, to navigate into Castle Bay. Um, so the only thing I did here was really take those guided lane markers out of the photograph. Um, and pretty much that was it just added a little bit of luminosity to the ocean. Yeah. Um, I love, I love the it. color that's in the that ocean. That, the tones you've got in this photo mm. for me are just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Go so well with each other. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think greens and greys work really well. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely. Um, But yeah, no, it was that was an enjoyable day. You know, the only thing was we actually we we almost missed the ferry home because the storm was so bad. Uh, Obviously, we had to get back from Barra back over to Eriske uh, because that's where we were staying. And uh, everybody was euphoric having captured this image, and then then it dawns on us that oh. Crikey, I don't, maybe the ferry ain't running now because it's so it's it's that the weather's just caved in. But um, this is the yeah. this the, this is the beauty of of going to to new places all the time is that um, you know you, you're capturing photographs that not many other people have captured, and mm. this is the beauty yeah. of going to the Uist Islands, for example. Um, you know, it's 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 not as it's not as popular for photographers or for tourists um which is a shame because it's a beautiful mm-hmm. beautiful islands yeah certainly the tones i mean you talk about style uh just like the other image the first image we looked at it's the tones that give you a style it's just it's what you actually post process your images you have got that yeah. style you mentioned with regards to the post processing um, yeah really love it as the tones is what, is what darren said you know it destroys you right in yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think yeah. if I'm honest with you, the next one is going to be, the next one is going to absolutely blow you I'm just away. Hoping you haven't shown it's my story the one as well, and it, it 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 brings together all the elements that we've been talking about. Yeah. This, Dean Allen, is a magic moment. <laughs> no, what? It's oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I remember that very well. <clears throat> Yeah, the Loch Marie light show. Well, mm. well <laughs> this, the, yeah, it, yeah, it was. It was. It was a really, really miserable day driving through Torridon. Absolutely, I'd almost given up hope. It was bleak. It was miserable. It was chucking down rain. It was, I, even though I'm, I'm the eternal optimist, but even I had decided that it's just not going to happen today. Um, and we were driving through, we'd gone through um, Gerlock and we were going through near Pooley. Um, and literally I stopped because uh, my wife called me on my mobile. So I, I pulled over and phoned her back 
And uh, I ended the conversation with her. And as I did so, I actually looked out the window and this was going on. <laughs> so by, by absolute fluke, I happened to be in the right place at the right time. And I turned around and the whole scene was just a dancing light show. And it probably went on for 10, 15 minutes where the sun came out and the, and the clouds just, just raced across the sky. And um, it was just an amazing scene. It really was. And uh, it was taken on a 500 mil lens um, at a fast shutter speed. And it was handheld because it was so windy. And, you know, some of my favorite photographs have been, have been handheld and um, yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. I have to say, Um, and it's done me well. Yeah. 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 Again, it's, it's all about creating an emotion, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, certainly it does provoke that um, that response to the light shows you mentioned, you put in that word. It certainly does that, and it's like you couldn't get in a better location as well, just the light show itself, just the way it's kind of set out. The terrain's beautiful. It's the layers that take you through the image, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I was very lucky. Mm. So talking of lucky... Actually, to be fair, you live near there, so go for it. The next shot is a well-known location Mm -hmm. in stunning conditions. Talk us through as well about how you capture weather in this shot. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's a place which I've photographed many, many times over the last 10, 15 years, and I've seen it in most conditions, but I've never seen it in the snow in April. So... Um, I'd gone there with a workshop group, so there was four of us um, all photographing because it's a it's a fabulous um, sunset location, and it's also a very popular sunset location with photographers. Um, and so we were there with a bunch of other group of photographers, and we were kind of all had our compositions set up, and we were all photographing. Everybody was photographing uh, the evening light. It wasn't spectacular uh, sunset, but it was okay. And everybody was happy with uh, what they were getting. But we could see in the distance the weather was was closing in and it was racing a- across the ocean. And um, quite quickly, everybody on the on the shelf that we were photographing with literally just put their cameras away, put their tripods away and ran back to the car park. And they were out of here. Um, but there was a few of us. So I just said to my guys, listen, just hang on, just hang on and just see what happens here because you just don't know what we're always trying to achieve is those transitional moments, those transitional weather conditions. Mm -hmm. This is what I always try to teach the guys. I will say, well, listen, things happen so quick here. Let's just wait. I know we're going to get drenched and I know we're going to get cold, but it might, might just Mm -hmm. be worth it. Um, And anyway, so they, they sort of agreed, okay, we'll hang around, you know, just put the shower cap over the camera and just, just wait to see what happens. Um, And I said, in actual fact, I think the wind really started to blow in quite, quite violently. So I said, you may, I think you best take your camera off your tripod here and we're going to do, we'll do this handheld, you know. Um, and I was talking to um, a guy called Harry, who, who's the Sky, who uh, works at Sky uh, Academy. He was up there with his group, and I said to Harry, because uh, he obviously he lives on Sky. I said, "This this could work out. This this looks as if it could be quite promising." This, and he says, "Yeah, it's worth hanging about." And we were the only group, my group and the, uh, the Sky Photo Academy, we were the only two groups there. And uh, and I knew something was going to happen because Harry got his camera, his tri- out of his camera bag. So I knew something was going on here, and uh, true no. enough. And so it was. It was nice where we had two groups of photographers actually working together here and and and, and talking to each other and and observing what was going on and helping one another because. Um, you know, uh, I had three relatively novice photographers with me, and I think Harry had a group of. Uh, novice photographers with him so it was kind of nice that everybody worked together on this photograph and 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 myself and harry helped everybody along just said listen it's 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 just um put your tripods away it's going to be handheld ramp up the iso so that you are comfortable with the shutter speed being handheld and then literally just fire and 
And then with that, this yeah. snow shower, which we could see the snow shower coming, raced across the ocean. And it was just a case now of just everybody just shooting uh, and photographing as, as much as they could. So it was a, a high ISO. It was high enough ISO for, for the shutter speed to be around about a hundredth of a second um, and literally just keep on photographing. Uh, we worked out that there was a, uh, I, I can't remember, it was a, I can't remember if it was nine seconds, that, that there was nine second gap between the light coming on and going off and then coming back on. So we kind of, all of us would go one, two, three, <laughs> and, and, and true enough. And then as soon as, as soon as it got to seven, just fire, just keep shooting until that, and that light will, it will appear in one of the shots, got to. Um, and so, and it, it, and it did. Um, so yeah, a lot of photographs. I think Any the ultra, speed? it would have been a fast Definitely. shutter speed. It would have been a hundredth of a second at least, I would have thought. Yeah, certainly captures the, the snow. Yeah, just, just like a Christmas card. Beautiful. Could imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to. I, I did say, guys, I don't know if you heard me, I said it reminds me of the advert of the snowman. Yes. In Scotland, yeah, you've got yeah, like the Iron Brew advert. There, yeah. You probably see it. I don't know if you've seen it down your way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's just yeah. that photo. That's just the, 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 the scenery as you're traveling with the snowman. This is what it reminds me of. It's that perfect shot. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 One of those yeah, ones, Dean, no, I imagine you've had several hundred for one <laughs> yeah yeah no no and, and, yeah it was just a, a, a fabulous moment when a group of a large group of two two groups of photographers all came together worked together and we all we all pulled together and helped each other out and um it was it was a you know it was an amazing experience and not an experience we'd actually had anticipated lovely, lovely. yeah definitely. and one beautiful I think a lot of us here are kind of quite thinking, God, if only, if only, <laughs> once in a lifetime, catch us something like that. The only, the only editing yeah, that was, was done here was just to bring out the shadows in, in, in the cliffs and uh, add, add, actually, add a little bit of blue to the photograph. Um, but other than that, it was pretty much Yeah, that. you did see, yeah. Yeah, yeah. certainly is, um, yeah, the colours are just, the editing just kind of draws you right into the picture, your style. Mm. That's why mm. we know it's yours. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, next, the next one we're going to put up, by the way, Dean Allen, is another one that we know is yours because that, look at the detail in that foreground. Mm. This is what yeah. I know you've Stuff that I walk by and think, oh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. You just, you do it and it just is stunning. Talk us through this shot. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. It's this glorious one. Yeah, this is my favourite beach in the Northern Highlands and it's, I love it and I wish I could live there. It's just an outstanding piece of coastline. Um, this, this, would have, this was taken in January and it was taken in 50 mile an hour winds and you know, the, the, the tripod didn't leave the truck. I left the tripod in the car park. And it was just a case of walking around handheld. It, it was taken on a, a Nikon 14 to 24 mil lens, uh, F16. Mm. And just, mm. It was just shooting um, and getting. What I really wanted to do was to get the grass flat. Um, so I, I was literally yeah. just lying, lying in, the, in the grass there and just photographing. As, as, and I, I, I wasn't, you, you mentioned the detail uh, in, in the sharpness. I was, I was focusing on the far piece of land on this particular photograph. Yeah. Um, I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't too concerned if the grass was soft at the time. My main focus at the time was making sure that the distant land was in focus. Um, and so therefore yeah. I focused on that. But I, I was on F16 and I thought, well, I'm shooting at a shutter speed at, I don't know, 200th of a second. Uh, it was really, really fast. Yeah. And it... it I was shooting at F16. If the grass was sharp, then that would have been a bonus. But I really, all I was concentrating on was getting the land in focus. Um, mm. And then, of course, then the sun came out um, because the sky was moving and racing so quickly. And then the sun came out on the left-hand side. Um, but, yeah, all handheld. Um, and I got knocked down a few times. Um, and it, it, oh. got quite, <laughs> it, got, 
it did get quite dangerous uh, at times. Um, yeah. But it, it was certainly certainly worth it. Certainly worth it. Yeah, definitely. And I think, yeah, definitely. You, know, for, you know, for me, um, obviously, composition is really important for me. Um, and I believe that, um, you know, for me, you know, getting a really good, successful landscape photograph relies on strong composition. It relies on uh, good lighting, uh, you know, subject matter and, and timing. And I think all those four elements came together on this particular image. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's. But again, you'll similar, similar to the light show on Lot Marie. You know, it was it's handheld, and you know I mentioned earlier on how some of my favourite photographs are handheld photographs um, because it yeah. allows you yeah. to. Uh, capture a particular moment um, it, and also it gives you so much it's quite liberating to be able to walk around yeah. without it, yeah. Freedom, yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. it does and it's it, and I wish I did it more I really do because I when I when I leave the tripod behind I I, I absolutely love just walking around taking photographs like, like this you know capturing the moment yeah. Um, quite stress free now it's like you know it takes a lot of weight off your and also you, your advantage point can change from second to second absolutely yeah yeah no I agree yeah. um, you know I've got hundreds of photographs taken you know in, a, in, in this sort of I was probably there for an hour and I've probably got hundreds and hundreds of photographs um, all with different um, yeah. different grass movements um, essentially that was the main difference was the grass movement yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah but no, it's a beautiful beach, and um, you know, it's again, it's not on the North Coast 500, so not everybody goes to it. It's not on the route, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's always quiet there, and nice. um, but it's brutal. It's it's a it's a bit like uh, Clactol, uh, a little bit further south. Um, it's on that it's on that yeah. same stretch of line, and the wind is brutal. It is you know, really is chaotic. Yeah, um, taking the prisoners. <laughs> Uh, exactly, but, but it's it, yeah. Every time I've been to Clactal, okay, it's only three times. I've had glorious yeah. sunshine and cold really? waters, and I just yeah. And yeah. even and even going further north, when you where you caught that um, uh, had a lovely scene near the waterfall, about ten minutes or uh, fifteen minutes further north. Yeah, I have yeah, to yeah. say every time I've been up there, I thought I'm going to get a Dino. No, haven't done it at all and oh, because it's just been beautiful, and I want this. So, oh. I want a bit of challenge. <laughs> Lovely, yeah, stunning. No, that was, yeah, no. I, I love, I love chaotic, dramatic um, uh, scenes, and yes. I do. Uh, I, I shoot a lot of my stuff on wide angles, um, a lot of wide angle stuff, low down, to get the drama. So is that like uh, the? Uh, is it? What's the lens you were using? Fourteen to twenty-four Nikkor yeah, one. It was, was that the D eight fifty back then? Yeah, I was I was using the D eight fifty at that time, so it would have been the fourteen to twenty-four mil lens. Um, and I, and, I've still yeah. got that lens. It's a it's not flagship. It's a really good lens. It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean it's worked well here. I mean all the elements you've gra dragged right into this with the light and everything as well. It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely no, beautiful. It's, yeah, fantastic lens. But. And if you think about the, the 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 drama and the passion in this one here, if we yeah. go to Dean's final image with us tonight, you couldn't get more mm. oh. opposite to that. Tranquil, tranquil. Stunning, and the looking through the water to get the yeah. the texture in the in the rocks underneath. Dean, you gave us a number of images that were of this nature, and I found it yeah. really difficult to choose. And this yeah. is one I hadn't seen of yours. And I th I just thought, actually, it was so different. It had the, the long exposure gorgeousness of it. The tranquility mm -hmm. comes across with this. But yeah. also the looking through just made it really special. Talk yeah. to us about this image. Yeah, I mean, th this this image was taken um, on, I think it's Celebos Beach on Harris. Um, and I, I mean, I photographed it many many times over the last 10 12 years uh and I, but i've never i've never seen this uh rock pool that you can see in in the foreground um and it was obviously only created with uh a series of strong storms that had been brewing over the previous week or so 
um, and it and there was obviously a, a change in the tidal system and everything came together um, on this particular day when this um, I, again, I mean, it was taken on a four, this would have been taken on a 14 mil lens. So it was back in my Nikon days of a couple of years ago. Uh, so again, yeah. um, it's kind of, it's probably not as big as that. You probably get to it and just think, well, I don't really see anything. It's, it's because I was really low down, uh, really low down using a wide angle lens. And so it created this drama in the, um, in the rocks, in, in the foreground. Again, it, it's, it's I wanted to create this sense of tranquility in amongst this spectacular amphitheater uh, that surrounded me um, and what with the, the, the colors of the of the, the greens in the water and the gray skies I love that combination of greens yeah. and, and gray yeah. um, and again creating lots of layers um, you know so as yeah. to create yeah. depth in in the photograph so there's lots of layers in this photograph that take you all the way through to Luskentire in the distance um and again i think this was this would have been focus stacked uh because i was so close mm. to these rocks that all have been focus stacked um i never mm. trusted the nikon d850 auto uh, the, the auto stoke focus stacking it never kind of i never got it yeah i don't use it too no i just i didn't trust it so i'd always do it manually so this would have been five or six different yeah. shots all pulled together. Um, but yeah, you know, and I toyed with the idea. I did take some photographs without the the uh, neutral density filter on just to see whether I would blend in uh, a more um, lively sky. Uh, but I decided, no, I just want the tranquility to come through on this one. Um, mm, it really does. Yeah. Uh, and just photograph it. So... Uh, Dean, you are in the water, is that right? Yep, in the water. Yeah. Uh, probably waist high. I was waist I high. Say, I was yeah. Yeah, I was waist high. <laughs> I, I, I was absolutely soaked. Um, absolutely sodden through. Nice. Um, I did have a, a workshop. I, I, I did have three guys with me. Uh, two of them never actually, I don't know where they went. They weren't, they weren't around at this time. I don't know where they went. Uh, I did have mm -hmm. a female guest with me, um, and she shot the photograph from the rock behind me. So she didn't get the same sort of perspective. Um, although I did, yeah, I did offer for her to pass her camera down for me to get the shot, but she she, she said no. But <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice <laughs> shot of a lovely area. It you know it's um, and it's, it's it's one of those it's one of those moments when you know you've. I, I, I used to I used to go to when I was driving around the Highlands and I would see old bothies and I think one day I'm going to come back here when it's snowing to photograph this bothy because it's going to be brilliant when it's snowing mm -hmm. and I keep on making these mental notes this is what I'm going to do this is what I'm going to do until one day I'll be driving along that same road and the bothy's been pulled down and it's no longer there for me to photograph and it's a real sharp lesson for me and uh, and for others really yeah. is that you know if it's there, photograph it today because it might not be there tomorrow. And I've been to this location lots of times since, and it, I've never seen it like this ever since. And it's always a, a, a message that I try to convey to everybody that it, you know, photograph it today. You have to photograph it today. At least get something in the bag. Um, but yeah, it's it's um, it's a beautiful scene. It's a beautiful beautiful beach, and it's given me a lot of pleasure over the years um, and some really nice photographs. And I know it's given a lot of people a lot of pleasure. It's, it's a wonderful beach. Um, but yeah, this is all about layers, different layers. But. Yeah, and it, I, I've only ever shot it from above and you don't get any of that perspective at all. So I'm now thinking the next time I get my butt back up there, straight down that beach and just look properly. Yeah, that's yeah. a priceless shot. I'm sticky way. I was actually well coming up on my wall. Beautiful, absolutely mm. beautiful. Mm. It's impeccable. I mean, the way I look at it, it's the cleanness of everything on it. Beautiful yeah, shot. yeah. I, I mean, got I, shot this one, this I, 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 I sort of wrestled really whether I should include the rocks in the foreground or not, and actually shoot above the rocks, uh, so as just to get a little tip of the of the of the green water at the bottom of the photograph. 
um, and take out those rocks and just have it like that. Um, and I, ha I do have photographs like that, and I do, I do like it. But it, but I've seen these rocks, and now that I've seen these rocks, um, I, I prefer it with the rocks in. Um, yes, yeah. the, the polarizer was used to, to see the the rocks underneath, but um, and it would have been a ten to filter. Um, but yeah, it just nice. just works just like works it. so well being able to, being able to see through that water and the rocks. Mm. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely, superb. Yep. And you see, this for me epitomizes when I asked you at the beginning about what what is a Dean Allen photograph. The, there's so many elements in here with that eye to detail, yeah. the long exposure, yeah. the color, and the and the depth of it as well. Just is that's a Dean Allen photograph to me <laughs> in one. Lovely, <laughs> thank you, uh, gentlemen. Do you, any questions that you would like? I've got a question I'm going to ask right at the end, if that's okay. Yeah, but um, do you have any questions that you would like to ask Dean? Why are you so good at what you do? Your, your craft is amazing. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's the only thing I can say tonight. Um, there's, a, there's a few images that's just stuck in my mind tonight, and um, I'm itching to get up back up to Scotland. I stay in Scotland, of course, but I'm itching to get up to the Hebrides, etc. Seeing these images, they're yeah. just effortless, mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, thank and you very thank much. Thank you for coming on, Dean, as well. No, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for inviting me. If you had one tip to give to our listeners and watchers, what would it be? What would it be? I Right, I, I can think of two. Uh, firstly, you know, and I'll, 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 I'll speak about the Highlands. Um, I am... Um, when I when I moved here, um, I wanted to throw myself completely into uh, into the Highlands. Uh, I wanted to uh, uh, absorb myself in the geology, the geography, the history, the culture, the language, the music, the politics, everything. Um, and you know, and and for me, the more the more I am interested in, well, the more things that I'm interested in the more things I find interesting. And therefore, if I am interested in the Highland clearances, for example, which I am, I find that that helps me by understanding the subject matter, it helps me photograph um, that subject matter. So when I go, you know, my, my workshops, with my workshops, I send out welcome packs and I encourage people. So for example, we are going to my first workshop uh, of the, next season is in the U.S. islands and one of the one of the places we go to is Eriske and I encourage people to watch the film Whiskey Galore because then if you can watch the Whiskey Galore it will give you some kind of sense of where we're going and so therefore I think understanding the subject matter is, is important as well and I think you know Daryl I know that you from Yorkshire and you know and I've seen your YouTube channel and I know the places that you go to and I'm sure you know those, you know the geology, you know the geography and the history of the place. And I think it's important that people get to know these things about what they're photographing to truly understand it. And another thing is about composition. I think composition is really important as well. And um, I've spoken about how I view things on a left to right basis. And I know other photographers just see as long as it's got a foreground, midground, background, that's all you've got to have. And fair enough. There's no right or wrong answer. But I think you know, the composition is where there's this argument that uh, photography is not art. And some of the argument surrounds composition in terms of, <coughs> you know, if you've got a painter or a musician, they start off their compositions with a blank piece of paper and a painter will add um, some pencil drawings and then add some colour and some contrast and some shape and some form and create a composition. Whereas and a, and a musician will start off with a blank piece of paper and, add a, co a chord and then a note and then a beat and then a melody and then some drums so he's, they're creating compositions whereas a photographer we're actually taking things out of the composition it's all there in front of us we've got to actually eliminate things completely different from other compositions in, in art so we are everything's in it's it's what's in those four lines that we see is the most important thing and so i my advice <coughs> excuse me, is on composition is to keep things really, really simple. Because 
if you're sitting in a room reading a book and you're listening to music and the TV is on and then your partner walks into the room and starts a conversation with you, you've got all this information that you're trying to process at the same time and you can't do it. You have to switch the telly off, turn the radio off, put the book down so you can speak to your partner. It's like that with composition. If you've got too much going on, you've got, you've got a tree, you've then got another tree, you've got a boulder, you've got some water, you've got a horse in the photograph. There's too much information. So for me, keep it simple. Keep it really, really simple. And simple is power. It's, it's powerful to keep a simple image. Like a, a classic example is a lone tree. A lone tree, everybody loves a lone tree. They love the lone tree because it's simple. And there's no doubt of what you want the viewer to look at. You want the viewer to look at that tree. And I think, you know, my photography has evolved over the last 20 years. And if I see my photograph that I took 20 years ago, it's completely different from now because I, I included so much in a photograph, too much information. And now I think now it's take, take as much, take, <laughs> take a lot of the information out and simplify it so that's what i try to do in, in my photography in the highlands is just simplify it yeah nice yeah. steve have you got a question before i ask um, my last one um, yeah i've got a after looking at all your images um it's obvious that you like that that sky and that drama have you have you got any good tips on capturing that type of drama, even whether it's good clothing, getting out there, choosing that transition of time, you know, and and do you choose that moment in time to get out there? You know, for an example, if you know there's a storm coming through, will you try and hit the back of that storm to photograph it and things like that? So just a few tips on trying to emulate your images, really. Yeah, I think, you know, like I mentioned earlier on, it, it, I, I am interested in geology, geography, history, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm also interested in meteorology, local meteorology. So I get to, I think I get to understand the weather systems in the Highlands. You know, I, I don't, I don't um, run workshops anywhere else, only the Highlands of Scotland, because this is, this is where I can bring most value to, to, to clients. Um, and it's because I understand the weather systems um, I, understand, I, I, can, I can anticipate them um, and um, put myself in the best possible position to take advantage of what's going to happen. Um, and I think, you know, I think, I think people have to invest in themselves if they want to, to progress in their photography. They have to invest in themselves and invest in time and spend as much time as they can in, the, in their chosen landscape to fully understand uh, how it works. Um, and that would be my be my advice is to is to take a great interest in weather systems and and spend as much time as you can in those landscapes to understand them. Um, you know, because I'm always looking for um, those transitional moments, and I'm also always looking for partial light. Partial light is one of the most underrated compositional tools out there, and I think if you can find partial light. Mm. Um, you're halfway there to get a, a successful landscape photograph. So, boys, we've all got our next instructions. We'll all be out going on our yeah. Facebook group going, partial light, go! <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to next weekend for my uh, <laughs> crazy weekend for doing photography. So, thank you, Dean. Nice, <laughs> lovely. So, I have got one final question, and they'll probably all chip in with something else, but... If you had one bit of advice to your younger self in your first year of picking up a camera, what would it be? <laughs> um, well, listen, I, I, for me, um, photography is fun. It's, it's, not, it's not supposed to make you miserable. And I think... Uh, in the, those early days of, of being a professional, I, I, I was too intense. I was too, um, too wound up and too serious um, and, and failed to live in the moment and failed to make the most of what was around me. 
And I think, you know, for me, I would just say, just, um, just relax, just enjoy the moments and not so be so intense um, and just enjoy, enjoy photography. Uh, you know, you know, I'm, you know, with my workshops, I'm very fortunate is that, <clears throat> you know, I have people from all four corners of the globe come on my workshops and I have people from all different religions, all different races, you know, um, only the last workshop I did um, in, um, in May just recently was uh, I had a, a, a multi-millionaire entrepreneur from New York and a factory worker from Stoke on the same workshop. And both of them, by the end of it, they were talking to each other as equals and they were best mates. And it was amazing to see how photography can bring such a diverse people together in their shared passion for photography. And I think that's a lesson that I've learned is that, you know, it is an amazing, amazing hobby. It's, it's an amazing hobby. And, you know, f the talent that is around in the UK at the moment in landscape photography is off the scale. It is amazingly high standard. And I think, you know, I get people from Europe and France and Denmark and Germany. Landscape photography is not a big thing over there. It's not a big interest over there. It's only when they come over here that they realize how big landscape photography is in the UK. And we have so much talent in this country, um, so much unbelievable high standard of work that's being produced, both both on, on YouTube and elsewhere. Uh, and I think, you know, and, you know, thanks to, you know, to you guys who have YouTube channels, you are broadening and broadening the, um, the reach of people um and it's bringing so much talent into the industry um that's how i feel i'd much prefer to be positive about it and um and be hopeful so i think yeah i'd probably to myself i'd just say stop being so intense just be a lot more hopeful and optimistic and uh you know it'll be all right in the end you know it'll be all right in the end but i think that's i think that's actually advice that we could all remember at certain times particularly in the times when it's all going a bit peak tong and we're all uh, stuck in a something is going hideously wrong. We've invested time and energy and passion into something, and it's just not quite doing it. Step back, remember the bigger picture, and just why we're doing this in the first place. Thank you, Dean. Can I say it's been lovely to have you on tonight, and just to to be able to share your photography. And also to see you again after a few years and just think, oh, I remember being there and, and being in the field with this man and learning from him. And I do desaturate my blues a lot just because of you. And just thank you to all of you for joining us tonight and have a lovely, lovely week. And if anybody really wants to get a cracking experience of learning about how to photograph those highlands beautifully, look Dean Allen up because... It's well worth the investment. Take care, oh, yeah. and we hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye. 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 Welcome to tonight's Landscape, Landscape Podcast. We are talking, talking for talking.